Hi guys, uh, thanks for coming to this session. Uh, so I'm Alban, the co-founder and CEO of Sketchfab, which is a platform to publish freely on the internet. And very happy to be here uh, today and to tell you a bit more about how you can use Sketchfab to publish freely content on the web and how, how you can use it uh, with the Unity ecosystem. Uh, so just a quick uh, lineup of what I'm going to cover. First, a uh, quick overview of what Sketchfab is. Uh, then I'm going to quickly review how do we do uh, VR from Sketchfab. Then tell a bit more about publishing from Unity Sketchfab and sharing within the Unity ecosystem. Um, and then how we, how we can share everywhere. So we started Sketchfab because whenever you create something, you need to be able to, to share it uh, on the internet. And so each format gave birth to a platform to, to publish it and share it and display it and embed it. And so that's exactly what we want to do with, with Sketchfab, uh, be a platform to let you do that for the 3D file format, publish, share, embed, display 3D content on the web, on desktop, on mobile, uh, in VR and in AR. So this sounds pretty cool, but how do we actually do that? Well, we started by building a 3D player, and like, we tried to make a universal 3D player. Uh, it's all based on WebGL, JavaScript, HTML5. Uh, so we start, started the player back in 2011, just when uh, WebGL came out. It was the first web standard to display 3D graphics in a browser. Um, and so, yeah, we're one of, one of the first platforms to bet on uh, WebGL. And so we've, we've kept improving the player and, and supporting more and more formats. And so today we support more than 50 uh, 3D formats. And so typical FBX, OBJ, Colada, but also GLTF, Point Clouds, uh, like STL, long tail of many weird formats. We also support very advanced uh, renderings, so only the browser, animated uh, files, uh, real-time lighting and shadow. And so here's a quick example of a scene, uh, and so all hosted on the web. It's really like a full mini world. Um, you can see it's uh, pretty smooth. I can dynamically move the, the lighting on the scene. I can go wherever I want. Uh, and yeah, it's all hosted for the player. We have a, a pretty robust offering editor that lets you do a lot of things on top of the player. And so here's a quick example. Uh, one of the cool things you can do is add 3D annotations uh, on top of your model. And so here is a, a Minecraft world that was published to the platform. And so through the editor, you can really very easily add uh, things like text info and, and save camera viewpoints. Uh, so here, here is my, my cathedral built in Minecraft. It's pretty nice. And through the hotspots, I can really uh, better control the navigation and so do things like that and add a bit of text info on top of the content. Uh, and guide, guide the visitor through, through the way he experiences uh, the model. And then we also have a, a pretty cool API that lets you build a lot of stuff on top of the player. So here is an example with uh, Overkill. Hoping it's going to load fast. Uh, but yeah, essentially, once you've embedded the content in another website, you can really uh, customize the behavior and, and switch from one viewer to another. Uh, I think it's a bit down in the page. And so, yeah, they were using Sketchfab to show, like, some of the assets of the game. Uh, and so, where are you? I missed it. I'm not a big fan of scrolling. Ah, here we go. Um, and so that's our embedded player right on the website. Um, I lost it again. Oops, here it is. Uh, so here you can see the mask, and then you can toggle uh, to the weapon, and again, it's going to show up here. And so that's all done through our API that lets you very easily integrate content from another website. Uh, you can also embed the player in a native application, for example. Uh, that's pretty cool. And so as a result of the player, uh, we've got a growing community of creators, close to 1 million creators. Uh, they've published more than 1.5 million scenes. And so I could just spend the rest of, of the session browsing for the content because a lot of it is really awesome. Uh, it's very diverse, not only gaming content. We really have uh, things across the board. Most of it is not downloadable, but a good number is. And so what's pretty cool is that you can 
typically filter the content for only downloadable uh, stuff if you want to use them to, to put inside a game. And so, cool example is that so typically we have a lot of people publishing 3D captures on the site. So for example, I did this 3D capture of uh, an Opel GT. Uh, so it's photogrammetry, so I, I took a lot of pictures around it and then uh, stitched them to make the 3D model. And so I, I captured that uh, in Brooklyn, in New York. If that loads. And so that's a, a really uh, raw 3D scan. Uh, it's pretty cool, but it's very like raw. Uh, and I put it for free download under Creative Commons. And then some other users started like reusing it. And so this guy retopologized it. So same model, uh, turned it into a, a low poly 3D asset that you could put in a game. Uh, so that's a, a pretty cool use case of, of how to use the content as well. And so how do we do VR? So our player is best based on WebGL, uh, which means we can also pretty easily do WebVR, which is a, a VR implementation of WebGL. And the player runs on pretty all headsets. The only one where we don't run is PSVR for now, so we're working on it. We just started working on the AR headsets as well. And so from any URL or any Sketchfab embed, you can view the content in VR with like six degrees of freedom. It's really like a volumetric scene. And so I'm going to just quickly show you our VR scene editor, again, using the, the Opel, Opel example. Um, so that's my car. Here I'm in the editor. And so I have a VR tab here. And so it's, it's really plug and play. In two clicks, I can define the scale of my VR scene and then define uh, where I want uh, the visitor to start uh, his VR view. And so it's really like. Uh, WYSIWYG uh, VR editor, so it's pretty cool. And then once I've set up my VR scene, I can just publish the URL and, and I would be able to experience the scene in VR, uh, for example, straight from a tweet or, or anywhere on the web. So uh, just a, a quick note about uh, publishing from Unity to Sketchfab. I'm actually going to use a, a video here uh, so you can go to sketchfab.com slash exporter slash unity to get our uh, unity exporter. And so basically it's an add-on that you're gonna install in your uh, unity interface. And so it's, it's very basic. Uh, so you can download it for free either on, on Sketchfab or on the unity uh, app store. And so once, once you've installed it, it's gonna add a share to Sketchfab uh, button inside your unity interface. It lets you uh, log into Sketchfab very easily. You can create a free account, and then you can uh, name your scene, add like description tags, and so on. And then in one click, it sends it straight from uh, Unity to Sketchfab, and then you can uh, share it to the rest of the world. So pretty st straightforward, uh, but yeah, works pretty well. And so how, how can you use it? Uh, so here are just quick examples uh, with Adam, the, the prequel uh, movie made by Unity. So this was published straight from Unity to Sketchfab uh, by Unity. It's also an example of our um, GLTF support, and it lets us do very high-res, physically-based rendering uh, straight from Unity. And so here you have uh, Adam. You can again see that I can change the the environment lighting, it's pretty nice. Um, and you'll see that any upload coming from, from Unity will carry a uploaded with Unity uh, logo here. It's pretty cool. This way you know uh, where the uploads are coming from. And so you can, you can use Sketchfab within Unity in a, in a, a lot of different places. Uh, one of the first places where we got integrated was in the Unity Asset Store, and so a lot of the People who sell assets on the Unity Asset Store use Sketchfab to, uh, to preview the assets. Uh, so here I'm on a listing of, of the giant worm, which is super cool. And when I do my listing, I can very easily add just a Sketchfab URL, and it's going to integrate the player right inside the, the listing. And uh, yeah, going to same player, web-based, uh, and going to show the assets, which is a pretty good way to, uh, to sell an asset. Uh, you kind of want to see it. Another place is the Unity forums. And so if you want to share some 
media content on the Unity forums. You can essentially share images or videos, and they recently added uh, Sketchfab support, and so same thing. Uh, I can showcase Unity scenes right in the forums, which is pretty nice. And the third place where we just got integrated in, in a Unity Connect, so like the community site of Unity, where you can very easily, uh, same thing, like add, a, add our player in your listing, uh, in, your, in your project, uh, which is a pretty cool way to, uh, to pump up your, uh, your listing. It's pretty nice. And so sharing from Unity to Sketchfab and from Sketchfab to Unity is, is one part of what we do, but you can actually share from pretty much any ways to create content. Uh, we're native in Photoshop, in Blender, and many other uh, places. You can publish from Minecraft to Sketchfab. And once it's on Sketchfab, you can reshare it to uh, the rest of the world. We are integrated in pretty much every publishing platform. Uh, so just quick examples uh, here. So here is an example of a scene posted by uh, Blizzard, World of Warcraft, on their Facebook wall. And so they regularly share fan art that's been made by our uh, community uh, on their wall. And so we have this uh, cool little orc that is uh, walking inside the newsfeed. It's pretty nice. And so you can uh, view it in VR straight from the Facebook newsfeed. And then I'm going to show you on Twitter how it's going to look like. Uh, so I'm going to say. Support in Twitter at Vision 17. Up. And so, straight from my tweet, you can see that Twitter recognized the player uh, and that's the beauty of HTML5 and WebGL. And so, it's really like a 3D window inside this uh, 2D tweet. And again, I can uh, move to VR straight, straight from the player, which is pretty nice. You can also use the player on your own website. So we showed the overkill example, and it works really just like YouTube. You grab the embed code, and, and you can paste it there. Uh, and then a lot of games use uh, Sketchfab as part of their uh, PR launch. So you can just include it in a, in a press release. And so there was an example on a PC Gamer uh, for Dawn of War. And so it's a pretty nice way to, to tease a game and show like parts of a game, even before the game is out. Uh, and Again, the, the player running directly in the news article. And so that's a quick overview of Sketchfab. And so if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. <laughs> yep. Uh, undo, undo. Oh, yeah, there <laughs> oh, right, thanks. Um, do you guys have any plans to, uh, for artists to monetize their models? Can they sell them? So right now, they cannot sell them, and we've been really focusing on just sharing and showing. Uh, but that's a very uh, highly requested feature. Like more than 70% of our users want to monetize. and so. It's definitely something we're thinking about, but I, I can't share uh, more at this point. <laughs> Is there any way to import uh, Sketchfab objects into a native VR app at runtime? Uh, yes. Well, so there are two things you can do. You can either use the player itself inside a native app, and so uh, uh, yeah, typically you could build a, an Android app and have our player in there. Um, and, and go, you, c you can go to a Sketchfab model straight in VR, and we have a VR interface that is VR only. Or once you've downloaded a model from Sketchfab, you can, yeah, re-import it and reuse it. Like we did, a, typically we have a, a lot of uploads from uh, a lot of museums, like the British Museum, and they did, just did a, a VR app with uh, Oculus, and so they used their Sketchfab models and they ported them into a, a, another app. So let's say I upload a model to that with Blender. So yep. Would it only be listed as a dot .blend, or would it be like a Unity prefab to be downloaded as? So it would be uh, listed as a dot .blend, and so I think we actually, I don't know if you actually see it straight from the, uh, maybe this one wasn't. 
it would be listed as a, as a dot blend if you publish it straight from Blender. Uh, but you can you can put whatever you want in the in the folder you upload, and so we'll display what we recognize the best. But then, as a download, you'll get whatever is put in the in the zip. Uh, hi, I was just wondering if you could talk about uh, the animation support and uh, so getting getting uh, mocap data in and out. So we support a bunch. So I'm not super technical, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to use that. Uh, but yeah, we support skeleton and bones, uh, solid animations, and morph targets. And we also support uh, time frame animations, uh, which is pretty cool. It means you can do typically things like uh, volumetric video. So I'm going to show a quick example here. So that's a volumetric video I did of my son walking, and I shot that with a Kinect. And so it actually took a, a 3D scan per frame, and then our type frame support uh, lets you, uh, yeah, lets you have it as an animated format. Does that answer the, the question, or? Well, I, I use Mixamo, right, for, yep. for as far as like getting a library of assets. But I'm wondering if this is uh, another outlet for, for uh, you know, characters. So yeah, we, so we definitely support the Mixamo stuff. And so uh, we have a lot of fun. Uh, so that's me <laughs> dancing Gangnam style. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's definitely something we support. Yeah. I did it. <laughs> there are still so many people who still think that I'm actually dancing and that I got recorded that way. <laughs> I definitely don't dance uh, that well. Hi, um, thank you for sharing. I, I'm a teacher, and I also teach teachers how to teach online. And so uh, the first question that I'm going to get from them is, is it accessible? The, so the annotations that we're able to add on your player, can a screen reader read those? Has it been tested yet? A screen reader? For, for people that um, have difficulty seeing. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Uh... I don't know. I would, I would need to look into it. We're actually working on, a, on sound support, and so you'd be able to have annotations which you can play as a sound. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, and then, yeah, we, we try to support education as much as we can. So we, have, we offer our pro subscriptions for free to any students and, and work with a lot of schools, either our art schools, but also like uh, programs who, or like learning management systems. We use our, our content. Typically, we have a lot of. Um, uh, things like uh, anatomical content, uh, which is uh, very interesting for uh, for courses and education. That's just a quick example. If it loads, and then yeah, for for uh, for kids and and like uh, beginner school, it's uh, just a great way to experience VR uh, in a very uh, yeah low low level way. Uh, and just, uh, yeah, we ran on the Google Cardboard, so you can uh, explore, yeah, for example, a, a beating heart uh, in VR. That's awesome. And are we able to upload and keep it, like, unlisted? So yeah. Still in, in yeah, once you have a pro account, so you can upload unlisted, or you can, even with a free account, you can publish as drafts, and, and it will uh, stay unlisted. Thank you. You're welcome. How many of you guys already knew about Sketchfab? Maybe like 50%? Cool. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you.